Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So today I am doing my end of August book reviews. And I, I'm, I feel like I say this every video, but I cannot believe it's already the end of August. Um, but essentially, let's get rolling. So if you have not seen my book reviews before, I give every book one to five stars. One means I did not like it, maybe didn't even finish reading it. Two stars, meh. Um, three stars, I liked it. It was a good book. Four stars, um, loved the book. And five stars, absolutely blew my mind, loved the book, would recommend this book to everybody. Um, so let's get started. I did not have any one-star books this latter half of the month, but I did have a two-star book for me called While the Gods Were Sleeping, A Journey Through Love and Rebellion in Nepal. And so essentially, why two stars for me? So this book is about a woman who um, is an anthropologist. Um, I think she's in her 20s, it's like 1985, and her and her fiancé, soon to be husband, moved to Nepal, where he is from, um, and she stays with his family during the time that she's giving birth to their first child, uh, while he's doing his graduate studies, and she's working on some of her graduate studies, and she explores um, just her experience of motherhood and family and marriage within this culture. I loved the premise of the book, and I loved parts of the book as I was reading it, but it vacillated a lot. Um, as far as like, what was the purpose of this book? Was it about her own personal memoir and experience, which is what I was really looking forward to? Um, or was it more of an academic study of um, her background, somewhat in anthropology or social, sociocultural studies? And it shifted into that more academic lens and her talking about the history of the country and um, her observations, but from a very academic viewpoint. So the tone of the book for me kept shifting and it, it kept losing me essentially. And it was kind of a bummer because I was really looking forward to um, more of her writing as a woman um, who happened to have this academic lens, but not through the voice of that part of her past because I didn't want to pick up and read an academic book. Does that make sense? So hence why it ended up being a two-star book for me. Um, I could see this being um, a great fit, though, for a lot of people, especially if they're in that uh, field of study. Um, yeah, it just wasn't the tone that I was looking for in the read. Um, I did have a couple of three-star books. Very, very different uh, three-star books. Let's talk about the one I really struggled with, with rating, and it's Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. So essentially, this book is about a female firefighter who lives in Texas, and she is just phenomenal. She kicks ass. She's completely committed to her career. Um, she's she just works hard to maintain her physical health. Um, she's uh, one of I think the few genuinely stronger females. Where and what I mean by that is genetically, she's um, able to perform tasks that a lot of other women um, cannot with either at all or without intense training. So she's always been top of the career, top in her field, and she's very successful. Um, and in the course of this time, uh, she gets a phone call from her estranged mother who lives up in uh, Massachusetts. Um, essentially, a circumstance has arisen and her mom needs her to come care for her. So she decides to leave the field department, or field department, I just made that up, fire department, um, that she is at and actually transferred to a fire department that it has a quite different, quite a different culture than she's been in. And it's very funny because they have never had a female firefighter um, before. And so she comes into the setting. And let me tell you, the first half of this book, I loved, I loved. And I'm thinking, okay, this is it. Like, I don't think this book is your typical romance book. But I'm like, I, this is how I can stomach romance, right? It's it's a little comfy. There's going to be a little bit of a love story, but it's hilarious. It's intelligent. And then for me, it just went downhill. And once the romance kicked in, and I don't know if it's me or not, but it just got like, I'm like, nobody would say that. And I get so upset. There's this one scene in the hospital where she like comes out and says all this stuff. And if you've read the book, hopefully you'll know what I'm referring to. And I'm like, that's not her. Like it, it was like a complete and total cop out to the type of woman she was. And I had a hard time with the second half. So I essentially, this, the gist of the book is about her relationships and trust with others that ties into her relationship with her mom and her, her parents' relationship and just the way she's gone into her adult life. And I love that concept. And I loved the writing in the beginning. 
Um, so it literally shot from a four star book for me to a two star book. So I went back and forth with what I was going to rate it. And I settled on a three. And the reason I settled on a three was because I felt like I could comfortably recommend this book to people that either have read Catherine Center before. Um, I haven't read any of her, her other books, but um, or just maybe more comfortable with like the romance component. But this was definitely in the beginning an intelligently written book. Her characters are fun. I loved the firehouse humor. It was cracking me up so many times. In fact, I was calling my husband Chris like, oh my God, you got to come here. This. <laughs> like, I loved that part. Um, and it was just for me as soon as the romance kicked in. So if you're, I guess, more tolerant, and I'm going to keep trying with some, not romance, romance, but books that, I guess, contemporary chiclet books, and I'll find it. But um, I would say this is definitely a good book and grab it. Um, but yeah, it, unfortunately for me, it ended up um, bouncing out. Uh, so three stars is where I settled. Um, the other three star book for me is actually an author I am just getting ready to do a lot of reading around, and that's Colson Whitehead's Sag Harbor. Now, this one was a solid three star book throughout. It was a good book. Um, so this book is set in the 1980s as well. I had a lot of 1980s reading this month, it seemed like. And um, essentially, it is out in the Hamptons of New York. But there is an area called Sag Harbor where the African-American community, the professional community, has set up their own sort of commu community, redundant. Um, but they have their own culture. And it's, it's all this whole book is focused in the summer. Our main character is a teenager. And it's essentially his coming of age story. Um, and it's so fun. Now, the way what threw me at first is it's set up, even though it's all the same characters, it's all the same summer, each chapter is huge, but it's essentially like a short story. So it's, it's focus is different. Um, and in the beginning, that kind of threw me a little bit. Uh, but then once I kind of got used to that approach, I settled right in and absolutely loved it. Um, but it explores themes, it explores girls, it explores friendships and what it means to be a boy and um, BB guns and <laughs> part-time jobs and working in the ice cream shop. And just so much of it was um, stuff that I could relate to, thinking back to that age. Um, so there was enough of that, but it was also interesting because it was a lot of stuff I couldn't relate to. Um, a, I've never been to the Hamptons. B, I'm obviously not an African-American male. Um, so just all of that lens made it just a really fun experience. And um, I did really like the book. I really liked his writing. And I've got a few more books coming over the next couple of months of his that I'll be reading. And I'm hoping that that continues through. Um, it just never was. It was a comfortable read. I think this is a great summer book. It just never, like, it didn't totally suck me in. But it was an easy, enjoyable book to read. So hence why three stars. I liked it. Um, so now I got some four star books, no five star books at the end of the month, but some solid four star books. These are books that I loved. Um, so let's talk about these. The 10,000 Things by Maria Darmu. I have no idea how to pronounce it. This is a Dutch author. Um, so this book is about a woman who um, has a child, her husband ups and leaves them. And so she returns to the island of which she and her parents are from. Um, where her grandmother still resides and her grandmother is really a very powerful woman on this island but i i can't even begin to describe the tone of this book and the writing um it is very magical and there is an element to it it reminded me almost of like a fable um or a fairy tale uh but very but modernized somewhat because i believe this book was written in the 50s but it is just, it's beautiful. It is so poetic. And what's really cool about it is in the beginning, you get to know some of the main characters in the island, but you also get to know some of the um, talked about ghosts on the island. And then the chapters later in the book kind of delve into some of the other characters. Um, and you, you get to learn a little bit more about who these um, side characters are, what their backstories are, and even some of the ghosts you've um, come to know through the people, the main character stories in the book, and what their or story of origin, so to speak, was. And it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful story. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. So the 10,000 Things. Um, the next book, Four Stars, <laughs> I, I can't even, Most Deadly Things, okay, by Kristen Arnett. So this book, set in Florida, <laughs> modern time, um, taxidermy family. 
And essentially, our main character has grown up. Um, her dad, there's a family run, uh, an own taxidermy shop. And she's really been the one. She has a brother. But it's really been her that has, um, is most like dad, has attached to her father while her brother is kind of more attached to mom. And she spent her childhood um, working in the taxidermy shop with her dad. And essentially, is um, I don't say taking it over, but she's his sort of co owner, co manager um, into her adult life until her father, um, shockingly ends his life and very saddingly and shockingly does it in the shop so that she finds him. So the beginning of the story starts out with this very tragic beginning. And I, I don't know what to say to you other than I have never, or not often have I experienced an author who can bring me through something so heartbreaking yet weave in hilarious in other moments where I was truly all over the place and I just fell madly in love with it for that reason. Um, but they, she goes through this tragedy and it essentially opens up where she's trying to then take over the shop, um, take care of her family. Um, our main character had a lover who was her a close friend growing up, another female who married her brother. Um, so she's essentially having an affair with her sister-in-law who has taken off a few years ago and left her brother and two children behind and just broke the whole family's heart. So the family's dealing with all this grief and all this loss. But what I loved about this book, I'm telling you, this book is full to me of metaphor and symbolism. Um, Cause the fact that you have, you're surrounded in this place um, outside of all the quirkiness that's captured with Florida, but you're surrounded in this place where um, you have death that is held onto, not the death itself, but the, the animals, right, are held onto to look alive, um, to sort of keep them, keep that connection. And what our main character is doing is so parallel to that. I, I just found this book profound. I don't know, maybe I should have given it five stars. Now as I'm talking about, it, I'm like, oh, four and a half stars, <laughs> four and a half stars. Um, Goodreads doesn't let me do that. So I just have to stick with the a solid star, but I absolutely love this book. I believe this was the debut, so I'm definitely putting this author on my radar. Um, just such a, such a great book. All right, next four-star book. This is an action book, very different tone, unsolved by James Patterson and David Ellis. And I'm going to be honest, I wasn't like, ooh, ooh like, <laughs> I don't know what that just was. <laughs> I, I, I have really no idea what that just was. I wasn't super excited. Uh, I didn't. I couldn't remember. I knew I'd read James Patterson before, but some of these really popular writers, especially when they have other people write for them, it's kind of like, oh, how is this going to be? And I ended up actually really liking it. It was really good. It was good the whole way through um, from beginning to end. So what is this book about? Um, our main character is in the FBI. And essentially, there's been a series of murders. She's an analyst in the FBI, not an agent. And that comes up very strongly. So she's like a data analyst. So essentially, there's been a series of um, murders that she is able, even though on the surface they look nothing alike, she's able through her analytics mind and data to identify that there's a pattern. And essentially what that does is it puts her in the crosshairs of the serial killer. I'm being very like FBI-ish right now, says me, who's never, anyway. Um, <laughs> turn the crosshairs, that was my pun, I guess, of the serial killer. And, um, but also of the FBI, because the serial killer knows things. Um, and there's being stuff leaked to the media that only somebody within the FBI knows. So there's a mole. And the question is, is it her and what's going on? So very fun book, um, kept me on, on the edge and fully engaged the whole way through. So if you're in the mood for like, I can still see this being a movie too. And if you're in the mood for that kind of book, um, or you just like action in general, I would highly recommend this one. Very good. Um, so last book, Four Stars, just finished, was the end of a trilogy, a fantasy trilogy. Um, I just finished, uh, I think I said that twice, but it, so I, it's done. Um, but The Liberation by Ian Tregella. So this started with the first book, The Mechanical, then went to The Rising, and you can see my prior book reviews. But essentially, we have a bunch of um, robotic uh, creatures called um, clackers, who have a form of a conscious that was supposed to have been controlled by something called a geese, they're geese. Um, but essentially we learn uh, that some of these clackers throughout the trilogy go rogue. 
um, then they essentially are able in the second book to free themselves. And then this book is all about that liberation. But what's really fascinating about what happens is that as they are free, the nature part of it, and when I say nature, it's like that sense of good versus bad, um, self-centered versus altruistic in that spectrum is actually encompassed within the clackers themselves. So you have splits within the clacker community and those that want to hurt the humans because they've hurt them and just all the ways it plays out and the different um, silos that sort of evolve and then how it all comes together at the very end, which is beautifully done. And I'm sitting there like, yep, I could see that. Yeah. Yep, I could see that too. And I feel like in a weird way, it's almost come full circle <laughs> from the first book in some ways. And so um, if you are not a fantasy fan, but you want to dabble, there are two series that to me come forward. Um, and this would be one of them. Brent Weeks, you've heard me talk about, is another one with the assassins. Um but if you are a fantasy fan and somehow you've not hit this trilogy yet, definitely pick it up um, because this, this one's solid and it's solid through all three books. Um, so that is it. Done with August. <laughs> I can't believe it. But as always, thank you for watching. Hit the green subscribe if you're not already because there will be a lot more to talk about when it comes to books. Always. But other than that, let's go read. Until the next.